Hi, it's Jason from NOI Music, and I am going to modulate the sweet spot. Sometimes you find just the right spot, and you want to tickle it. That's what I'm going to do today with maths. And I'm going to go through the patch step by step. For this video, I'm going to assume only two things, that you have a maths and something you want to modulate. For this demonstration, I've chosen the variable shape control on the STO oscillator since it has a wide range and modulating it will have a very obvious effect. Assuming you have no manuals or documentation in front of you, I'm going to show you how to take channels 2 and 3 of mass to do a little fishing. What we want to do is find the sweet spot and have some idea of what kind of voltage it takes to get there. I've got a gate on channel 1 providing a basic envelope for the mod demix so we can hear the STO. The shape control on the STO has its own dedicated knob and a CV input. The sweet spot I'm going for is somewhere near the end of the control. So we have external control, but what voltage will it accept? Let's do some fishing with mass and find out. I'll start with the output on channel 3. With nothing plugged into the input, adjusting the dial for channel 3 will output 0 volts at 12 o'clock, positive 5 volts fully clockwise, and negative 5 volts counterclockwise. I'm going to patch the output of channel 3 to the shape control and see what happens. It seems like I can't quite reach the top end of that sweet spot, and applying negative voltage doesn't do anything. Perhaps 5 volts isn't enough here. Let's try channel 2. Channel 2 functions the same as channel 3 if no input is connected, except instead of outputting negative and positive 5 volts, we have 10. It appears that channel 2 outputs enough voltage to control the entirety of the shape input, even beyond its range on the front panel, to the point where adding more voltage doesn't seem to have any additional effect. So what we've learned on our little fishing expedition is that the shape CV input responds only to positive voltage, and that more than 5 volts is needed to get to the extreme edge of the control. You can use this same technique to do a little detective work with any type of CV input to see what it'll take to get you to that sweet spot. Now rather than wiggle channels 2 or 3, I want mass to do the modulation for me. So I'm going to build a simple LFO using the function generator on channel 4 of mass. Everything from these blue knobs to the right represents channel 4 of mass, just as everything from these blue knobs to the left represents channel 1 of mass. These are your function generators. The big buttons on channels 1 and 4 are for cycling. This will trigger and re-trigger the function generator over and over in a loop, making it into a complex oscillator. I'm not going to dive into every feature of this function generator in this video, but I will set up a simple LFO that I can use to modulate the shape control, and I'll show you how to offset it. If I set the rise and fall knobs roughly to equal amounts, I'm going with about 70% or so here, and the response control to linear, which is right about where the little line is on the panel, I'll get a cycle that will be roughly triangular in shape, perfect for my LFO. If I push the cycle button, it will light up red. This is a latched control and will stay on and continue cycling until I push the button again to stop it. You can see on the green LED here, a visual representation of my LFO here in action. Channel 4 has three outputs. You have a unity output just below the LED here, which is the full amplitude of the function generator, about 0 to 8 volts. You have the channel 4 output, which is the same as the unity output except it's married to this attenuverter. At full clockwise, you have full amplitude. 
going from there down to zero amplitude at about 12 o'clock, and then reverse polarity heading counterclockwise. Lastly, you have an EOC output, which fires a gate at the end of each cycle with its own LED. I'm going to patch the unity output into my shape control and see what I get. It's modulating the control as I expected, but at full amplitude the range is too wide. Let's plug into the channel 4 output and use the attenuverter. Well, I can lessen the overall amplitude, but I was hoping to get that bit at the extreme end. So essentially I want a lower amplitude of my LFO, but offset it to get to the far end of the shape control the sweet spot I found earlier. To do this, I'll need to direct your attention to a part of the module that gives maths its namesake, the sum output. This is where it's all going to come together. The sum output is literally channels 1, 2, 3, and 4 all added together. And by channels, I mean the ones controlled by all the attenuverters that run down the middle of the module. The unity outputs of the function generators are separate from this sum and any channels that have something plugged into their output, like my envelope on channel 1, are taken out of the sum. This way you can use a couple of channels to do voltage math, and leave the remaining channels for some other function without contributing to the sum. I'm going to set all of my attenuverters, except my envelope at channel 1, to 0, which is 12 o'clock. I want to start at 0 volts and work from there. The LEDs at the bottom will show you if there's positive or negative voltage present at the sum. I'm going to use channel 2 for a voltage offset, and my LFO on channel 4 for modulation. This will get me to my sweet spot. If you want, you can patch a dummy cable into channel 3 to make sure its attenuverter is not contributing to the sum. Channel 1 is currently in use, so the only things being added to the sum are channels 2 and 4. I'm going to start up my oscillator again, patch the sum into the shape control, and dial up channel 2. I'm increasing the minimum voltage for my modulation. I'll find the peak and then back off a little to allow the additional added voltage of my LFO on channel 4 to wiggle the rest. Adjusting the amplitude of the LFO on channel 4 and the voltage offset on channel 2 until I find a range that I like. The voltages are added together, and now I'm modulating only the upper end of where my sweet spot is. Since channel 3 is unused, I'll add a little bit to this patch. The rise and fall times have their own control inputs, as well as a both input, which will adjust the rise and fall simultaneously. Adjusting the rise and fall times will speed up or slow down the cycle, and thus I can impart a frequency control over my LFO with the voltage from channel 3.